Light is on fire, okay? Okay, amen. You just want to look at my outline now? <laughs> well, here, I'll show you mine. You know, that's funny that Pastor would say that about the outline last week when he started preaching from the book of Job. I thought, man, it's just unbelievable uh, how the Holy Spirit works. And I just, I thank God for that. Thank God that you and I have another opportunity to gather in the house of the Lord on such a beautiful Lord's Day. Um, as we begin... I'm going to be a little selfish. I'm going to ask that you pray for me today. Uh, the battle is on. We're in a battle, but thank God we've won the war. Greater is he that is in us, in us than he that is in the world. So with that in mind, as we go to prayer, what a privilege it is to pray with one another, for one another. And if the Lord lays someone on your heart that's not a Christian, perhaps someone that's uh, in a backslidden situation or not here today for... Uh, various reasons, what a privilege it is to lift up our loved ones, to, to pray that the Holy Spirit would touch their hearts. So with that in mind, let's, let's go to the Lord and just ask Him to, to not only be our teacher this morning, thank Him for His Word, and thank God that you and I, as children of God, can come to a house of prayer where we're able to, to have the liberty to read the Word of God, to share the Word of God, to be with uh, the brethren, and what a privilege it is. So let's open in prayer. Lord, truly, we thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day that you've given us, just as Brother Adolph has shared. It's so beautiful, Lord. It's warm and, and dry and everything, and he, he spoke of the, the hay being dry, Lord, because we know that the farmers have struggled with getting crops in, getting their hay down and put up. But Lord, yet... You're right there with us. You tell us that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. And Lord, we just count it a privilege to be in your house of prayer this morning. We count it a privilege to be called a child of the King. So we just ask for your help as we look into your word. We pray, Lord, that nothing would be said that would be uh, disruptive or, or cause any doubt or any anything, Lord, not according to your perfect will. Give us clear, complete understanding of your word. Lord, help us to understand, help us to be doers, not hearers only. And we just pray for each teacher, Lord, in, in the Sunday school class right now, pray for each student. We pray, Lord, that today would be just a special day for each one of us. We'll thank and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Last week, we closed out in chapter 5 of Mark. We read 14 through 17. I want to read that again. And I said this, this week that we would share with the idea of the positive and the negative part of a certain scripture that the Lord gave me. So with that in mind, I'd like to reread Mark chapter 5, verses 14 through 17 once again. And we'll just, I'll try to pick up right where we left off and just see what the Lord has for us this morning. I can say this so that it'll be in your heart and in your mind that the Lord has given me an outline here dealing with personal possessions, dealing with uh, how we feel about things, things of the world. And I, I know all through these years, um, well, I can look back and remember 60-some years for sure, I can remember teachers and preachers saying, may we learn to hang on to things of this world lightly. And as I sat at my desk this morning, I, I thought, yes, Lord, that's what I want to continue to learn to do, to hang on to things lightly. Linda and I have worked all of our adult life to accumulate a few things, you know, but, but yet may we grow in his grace and knowledge so that when the time comes for us to go home and we know that as uh, we get older, things wear out and we know it isn't long, you know, if the Lord should tarry, that each one of us, the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. We know that's coming. We try to our very best to avoid it. You know, I mean, I would be lying if I said I didn't. I enjoy life. I've had a good life. But I know at the end of my life, according to what the Bible says, the Lord has gone to prepare a place for us. Each one that has claimed Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, each one that has accepted him and asked for forgiveness, he has gone to prepare a place for us. But in the meantime, we have these things. And if we aren't careful, 
we want to we want to hang on. This is this is mine. This is mine. I don't want to share, you know, type thing. So I just asked the Lord, and I've had a certain individual on my mind every time I read this, and it breaks my heart because, and I'm not judging. I, I'm not person judges himself as we read the word of God and how we conduct ourselves. You know, we know, we know whether someone is so tight. So I'm going to use the word greed because that's how the Lord has dealt with me in this lesson. With the P, the positive, the plus, the plus sign, the N, the negative. And I thought, well, Lord, how could I just get any more simple than that? And I thought, well, a battery, positive, negative, you know, the things that we want, the things that we don't want. Uh, so with that in mind, I want, to, I want to read verses 14 through 17 and Mark 5. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. So, when they're trying to, they're telling the Lord to go back, go back across where you came from, go back across the Galilean Sea. And remember last week, he had just crossed over uh, the Galilean Sea to the eastern shore to uh, Decapolis. He was there, he preached. The first thing he sees is the legion. He casts the demons out. The pigs go over the cliff, they drown. The herdsmen have lost their possessions. The herdsmen has lost, they've, they've lost their livelihood. I'm just going to read. I know I, I read part of this last week, but I, I won't go over the scripture. But the herdsmen were more interested in that of losing their possessions than gaining eternal salvation. Today, as you and I share the gospel with people, there are people that we share the gospel with that are not willing to give up possessions. And we read in Luke 18, uh, verses 18 through 25, and I just, I headed that, uh, the rich young ruler, even though it was in Mark, I believe, where the Lord calls the, the young man, the rich young ruler. You don't need to turn there, but I want to remind us that in Luke 18, Matthew 19, Mark 10, the Lord, it's the same story about uh, when, they, when they ask him, Lord, what do I have to do to obtain eternal security or, or eternal life? What do I have to do to obtain this? I've, and the Lord tells him, uh, not to lie, not to steal, not, not to bear false witness, you know. And he named over, I think, seven different of the Ten Commandments. And this young man says, Lord, I have done that all of my life. I've been a, and, and we talk to people. I've talked to people personally. They said, well, I'm a good person. And this one poor old fellow, remember when Linda and I was at, sitting at their uh, kitchen table, he said, I've never sinned. Well, we know better than that because uh, Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And until, as you and I share the gospel and those people that we talk to understand that they have broken God's laws, they have broken God's commandments, they're certainly not going to, to listen to how to become a Christian. And I know I've shared before because it touches my heart every time I think of this when I shared to a friend of mine, and he's in glory right now because he accepted the Lord. He was in his chair, couldn't walk, couldn't get up. He, was, he never got up again. And I said, Bob, did you ever sin? And he kind of <laughs> chuckled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was the beginning right then as I shared the gospel with him. Bob, have you ever sinned? He said, yeah. Yeah, I have. You know, and then as you and I share the gospel and the Holy Spirit begins to convict that heart, that person begins to understand the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to that person, then we share how they get saved. And it's, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it because that's an eternal destination change for that soul. These men told, was, was telling Jesus, in my words, get away. I don't want this. I'm, I'm not interested in any of this. So with that in mind, I want to share about the cares of this world. My goal, this is my own personal uh, thoughts right here. My goal is to in, uh, emulate the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3.7. 
But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. I thought, oh, what a goal to set, you know. Things of this world. We, we just, we want to have a, a bank account. We want to have this and that and lands and things and places to go. Brother Paul gives us the example there in Philippians 3. May I understand that all this gain is soon going to burn, isn't it? If we read in Peter, the, the Bible says that it will soon burn. There will be nothing left. So may we have eternal vision. Remember when Pastor shared not long ago about us having that eternal vision? Seeing what's ahead of us? The Lord has gone to prepare a place for us. That's what I want. I want to have that on my heart and on my mind. And I want us to be reminded. It's important, of course, to have things, you know. And Brother Adolph, do I have your permission to pick on you a little bit today? He told me before I, I could, you know. Adolph is my friend. But, but uh, well, I don't know what was said, but we'll see how much of a friend we are at the end of the class. But no, I, I, nothing like that. Um, in verses 14 through 17, we have the positive outlook and then the negative. I heard a week or two ago, I talked about being uh, conservative and, and saving, you know, and being, being I heard, frugal. Frugal, F-R-U-G-A-L, frugal. Then my pastor, and I thought of the, the synonym, thrifty. And he spoke of a thrift shop. I know Annabelle, our granddaughter, she talks about going to a thrift shop, being thrifty, being wise, how we spend our money. So with that in mind, I would like to turn to Proverbs chapter 27, frugal. God says, take care of what we have. Save a little for that rainy day. Isn't that? We've all heard that, haven't we? We've all heard that. And the older we get, uh, the more we understand that. Proverbs chapter 27, verses 23 through 27. When I read a scripture like this, and I know I've, I say this quite often, it's hard for me not to stop right there as, as certain words just jump out. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 23. And again, we're talking about possessions, worldly possessions, things, things. Proverbs 27, 23. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and to look well to thy herds. The Lord is telling us right here to take care what we have. I mean, it, it's so practical. When I read that, I thought, well, Lord, I've read it before, but I've never seen it just exactly like you said uh, this time to me right here. Take care of what you have. Take care of your flocks, he says, and look well to your herds. Take care of what I've given you. And I, uh, I looked up the word diligent. Diligent. Characterized by steady, earnest, and energetic effort. Bottom line, I can hear my mom when I was little. She, was, she quoted like from Timothy, hey, you don't eat or you don't work, you don't eat. That, you know, she would say, well, why? why are you telling me that? Because it's time to go to work. My parents taught me to work, you know. We're to be diligent, he says right here, for each one of us. To be diligent in what the things that the Lord have given. Pastor last week talked about going to work. He said, hey, when you get ready to go to work in the morning, are you going to run out the door at five minutes to six when you know you have to be on the road at six minutes to six? No. We get up. We prepare. We make an effort. Diligently. Make an effort. Pastor Sherry, I can remember when I was little. Saturday night. I'm going to use the term as it was given to me. You got your bed clothes laid out for tomorrow morning? Well, had a little gray suit when I was a kid. You got ready. You found it the night before. And Linda and I, well, what, 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 am I gonna, what are you going to wear tomorrow? You know, are, are you getting ready? Are you ready? Or do I get up in the morning, have just enough time to run in, brush my teeth, comb my hair, and out the door, and forget on the way through? Life itself, the Lord is telling us right here, be diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. Riches are not forever. The older you get, the more you realize that. Riches are not forever. 
and doth the crown endure to every generation. This is where I was going to pick on Brother Adolph. The hay appeareth in the tender grass showeth itself. Last Wednesday night, Linda and I was on the way to church. Monday and Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday for sure, had been warm, hot, dry days. The farmers were putting up the hay in our area, you know, and on the way to, on the way to church, we looked at the fields, we saw where the hay had been cut and put up. And I know that Brother Adolph, Wednesday, he and, and uh, Sister Betty put hay up, because that's the first thing I asked him. I said, hey, <laughs> how much hay did you put up? Because, but I, when I looked at this, I said, well, I have to say something about Brother Adolph, because I know he was diligent to take care of his hay fields. Because the Wednesday before that, Sister Betty told me that they raised a couple uh, young uh, heifers for the family. They have four children, you know, da 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 da, and we, we raise up and we take care of our family and we, we have, we're making provision. We're looking ahead, as he says right here, diligently to take care of our flocks and our herds. Again, the positive side of possessions. Does it mean? Does it mean that we have a problem? Remember not long ago, I shared with you about the guy at work talking about the greedy Christian. He called me a greedy Christian because I had asked for lumber. And I was in a position that I was in material at that time. I could drive around, get a fork truck or whatever, tow motor, and go out back and I could pick up the wood and load it on my truck. I had asked permission, I had permission, so I was taking it, you know, and this guy, thought I was a greedy Christian because I was taking all the wood. Same thing, right here. Plan, plan, look forward. Can you, can you use certain things or do we throw things away? And my, I want to share a personal problem that I have with people that throw away food. I like leftovers. I don't know why, that, I'm, just, I'm, showing, I'm, I'm sharing my heart with you. You know, I do. When people throw food away, I think, what a wasteful thing, you know? Uh, and I know people, personally, that they don't eat re leftovers. I'm like, well, that's your prerogative, but when you get hungry, I hope I don't remember that when you come to my house to, to sit down at the supper table. Maybe, you know, I, well, not really, not really. I would share with anybody. But, but I think of things like that. I do, I think of things like that. When I, when I see people, and the older I get, I see people that they waste things and they, they need things. But man, and you make fun of me, you know? And I'm not a hoarder, even though my wife thinks I'm a hoarder. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Uh, but it's good to be diligent with the things of the Lord. Do you realize when we pray and we thank the Lord for what we have, do you really mean that? And every now and then I just sit back and I think, well, Lord, do I understand what I'm saying? Do I really understand? You know? And I thought of Brother Jerry. I'm going to pick on him. And, and <laughs> the, the next verse, and then we'll go on. Verse 25. The hay appeareth. And the tender grass showeth itself, and the herbs of the mountains are gathered. I know for sure that Brother Jerry and Brother Billy were in the woods this spring digging ramps. And I've had people laugh at me all my life. Because I'm from Southern Garrettsville, you know, so I eat ramps sometimes. And I dug ramps this spring. And I know Billy and Jerry dug ramps and canned them. They pickled them while I pickled them and they, they put them in some kind of a solution. And I thought, yes, Lord, you're talking to me. The Lord spoke to me through this verse of scripture uh, this week like never before. It's so personal. You know, it's so personal. I said, well, thank you, Lord. How practical for us to see the positive side of being frugal. Being frugal. Verse 26. Here's the end result. Here's the positive part. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance for thy maidens. You'll be well taken care of if you, if you take care of what the Lord has given us. Now, we'll go from the positive which I wanted to share one other thing right here. And I've heard the pastor share this scripture. I've heard brother, our Sunday school teacher, Bob Delaney, share this. Uh, Psalm 37, verse 25 says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. Now, there's, and then there is, there's understanding, naturally, as we look into the word of God. 
What he's saying right there is, you take care of what the Lord has provided for you. And if you are in need, the Lord will provide for what you need. You take care of your household, your family, like this right here. And I heard the pastor from this pulpit say, is anyone that is a member here at New Testament Baptist Church, are you hungry? Are you going without? Are you destitute? Do you have a place to stay? No one said a word. Thank God for that. God said it. He provides. He does what he says. He does what he says. Thank God for that. And I appreciate that. And when I don't, sometimes there's, there's things in Scripture I don't know. I don't understand. And I say, well, Lord, I, I'm not sure about this one. But when I look at this, and we are obedient. Here's the key. Or one of the keys. This is one of the keys. Obedient to what the Lord gives us in the direction when he teaches us to live right here. Are, am I being diligent with my job? Am I being diligent with my pay? Do I have to have new, 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 new all the time? Does it have to be new? No, it doesn't. And the older I get, the more I understand that. I don't have to have everything new. I do like to have everything that works right. I do like that. You know, so we have to. But he says also, he says, maintenance. Take care of you have to take care of things. You have to take care of things. We have to be frugal in everything, what we have and how we treat everything the Lord has given us. Thank God you'll never outgive the Lord either. I, just, I love it. I love it. Now, let's go back to, uh, let's, let's just turn to 1 Timothy 6, the 6th chapter, 1 Timothy. I wasn't too sure how far we'd go, but we, we're going to get right to the idea of this. If I was to say, money is the root of all evil. What? The love of money. Do you realize how many times, if we would think back, I, it's hard to tell how many times I've heard people of the world make that statement. Money's the, the root of all evil. No, money isn't. It's the love of money. You know, and with that in mind, that's where the, the Lord has taken me from uh, Mark chapter 5 with the herdsmen who have lost their possessions, lost their herd. Get away from me. Get away from me. You know, the Lord says, it's not the things, it's what I, what I, how I feel, that avarice greed for money. I looked at that word and I thought, Lord, don't ever let me forget that. I like to, I don't know, it just all of a sudden the Lord says, and I, I've asked the Lord, help, help me with my vocabulary, help me to learn, help me to remember, help me to understand. And that word, avarice. He tells us, it's the greed of money. Let me read the meaning. A greed for money and abnormal hatred of parting with it. Abnormal hatred of parting with that money. I'm not going to go there. I was going to say I, 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 I know people like that. You get them in the wall. Oh, 1929, the, the Great Depression. I've been told that people jumped out of the windows when the, when the, the, the Depression. Bank, they went bankrupt. All of a sudden, they lost everything. The stock market, thank you. That's the, stock market crashed, 1929. People were jumping out of windows. I thought, oh, Lord, how could that be? How could that be? I don't see any children in here. So everyone in here is an adult, and we've been around. And if you want to make me mad, get in my wallet. If I want to make you mad, I'll get in your wallet. Huh? <laughs> you looked. You looked in my wallet? <laughs> no, I, I, no, I don't. He looked, in, he looked in my wallet. They're not, ah. But we get the idea. See, that's good. It's good that we can laugh because I want us to understand that this is what was happening here when those uh, herdsmen lost their money, their possessions. See? And probably, and we're not going to go there, I just for a second, I said I wouldn't, but I can't help it. We know people, the world, the world would do anything for that stinking dollar. It's terrible. 
I like money too. I wish my old truck bed was full of it. Not if it's going to draw me away from the Lord. And I've asked the Lord, since I can remember, I want to have enough so I can eat, a place to stay, and on the road. I, I'm fine with that. I don't have any problem with that. Now, since I got saved and I begin to see what uh, the world would do for money and what money does to people, look at the devastation happens because of that rotten dollar, what they think of it, that avarice feeling. A greed for money and abnormal hatred parting with it. Now let's go to 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, The love of money is the root of all evil. But I'd like to read the uh, first 12 verses of 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Pastor touched on this a little bit last week. And he was in, in Job like he said, Hey, did you look at my notes? No, but when he, when he pastor would share from Job and that stuff, how, uh, how Satan, how powerful he can be. Look what he does with this stinking dollar. You know, I call it a stinking dollar because I don't want to be hanging on to that stuff with too tight of a grip. Because the Bible said right there in uh, 15th or 16th verse when we read out of Proverbs 27. Well, not the 16th, 20 something. In Proverbs, it will not last forever. That dollar will not last forever. Let's get a hold of the things that will last forever. Let's get a hold of that eternal life. Let's get a hold of those, those things that our Lord would have us to do, to share the good news, to take souls with us, to tell people about Jesus. Let me just, you wait till we get down here just a little bit farther. I don't think we're going to make it today. We don't have time, but maybe, Lord willing, next week, we'll see how when the legion, when he was uh, delivered, from the, the possession of devil possession, demon possession. And then he got saved. And then what did he want to do? He wanted to be with Jesus. See, he wanted to share. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Isn't that something? I remember when my brother Tim, he's coming out in a couple of weeks, Lord willing. When, when Tim got saved, he was 70 years old. The first thing he did, he said, Harold, why didn't we get saved when we were kids? He comes to the house and he says to Linda and I, Hey, hey Harold, where's your truck keys? I said, they're hanging there on the nail. Why, what's up? He said, I'm going to Enoch. says, my other brother. First thing he did, he went to tell our other brother. First thing he did. He said, I want to go talk to Enoch and Gay. Tell them what Jesus did for me. And if our heart has cooled off to the things of the Lord, to where we don't want to go tell somebody, I'll come and I'll pray with you. Let's continue to have a soft heart. And Lord, help me. Help me not to take for granted that John and Jane is saved. Help me not to take for granted that everything's okay. Well, pastor, he'll, he'll, he'll do that. Or the elders, they'll, they'll do that. No, no. You probably will never see with people that I run in contact with. I live up here. Ask the Lord for you and I to be sensitive to those about us. There's not one person in here that does not know someone personally that is not a Christian. I'm sorry. That's how many unchurched, unsaved people are out there. Our pastor, he comes, he shares the word of God, he preaches to us and says, listen, I'm preparing you to take this out there and tell your friends and neighbors. Now, I've already gone ahead to next week's lesson, but it doesn't make any difference. Now we're prepared. Now I've told you what I'm going to tell you. Now next week, probably I'll tell you, and then I'll tell you what I told you. Isn't that neat? See? And I do. I get a giggle. I, I, I giggle about that myself. I think, oh, Lord, that sounds so silly. But it's so practical. It's so practical. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Again, dealing with that money. And six months from now, if I can remember, I'm going to ask you as a class, has anyone said to you, the, that money is the root of all evil. Not love of money. Oh yeah, money is the root of all evil. No, the love of money. That causes us to have this avarice, greedy, uh, possessional. Don't want don't to part with it. A pastor, I think, not long ago said something about the, 
the, I hadn't heard that since I was a kid or long time. The buffalo squeak. You, you hold on to the, to the nickel so hard, the buffalo squeaked or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just, you're so tight. Just, oh, don't dare. And Avon's, uh, <laughs> Adolph's laughing and I know what he thought. No, I'm not going to say what I was told out behind the barn. But listen. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So tight that they just squeak. They're so tight. There's a difference. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. And I thank God for his word and his Holy Spirit to teach you and I. Yes, I'm to be frugal. But not have an avarice spirit. Not a greedy spirit. I love it when my pastor gives money away to the people. I do. I do. It's in people in need. It's God's money. You know? Because I know people personally. Again, I, boy, I must know some greedy people. I, they get mad when they think about it. All they want to do is pass the hat. Pass the hat. Pass the hat. It's one of the first things I heard when I got saved. Well, you know what the first thing they're going to do? Pass the hat. Pass the hat. Well, been there, done that, I guess. I've, I've been in situations like that. But thank God, listen. When you and I grow, mature, a pastor challenged us just a month or two ago. He says, I'm challenging you this spring, this summer, to mature into men and women of God so that we are, as a Christian, Christ-like. Not just to let our light so shine before the world that they see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven, but they say, man, it's like today when Linda and I were talking about coming to church. I couldn't wait to get to church. I couldn't wait to get to church. There's something good to hear from me. I've already been blessed. I've been blessed. It's good to come. It's good to be with the brethren. It's good to know that we can pray with and for one another. And our God is still alive, regardless of what we're going through. And there isn't a family here that doesn't have a problem this morning. Leave it out the door. Leave it outside. We've come to worship the Lord. We've come to learn about Him. We've come to say, Lord, you help me with this attitude. Because I go right back to the idea that, yeah, I know that guy, greedy Christian. I know him. Did I? Did I act like that, Lord? If I did, you forgive me. But when it comes time for me to get my two before, and if it's mine, I want it. Maybe that's a flaw in my character. I don't know. I don't think so. Because he tells me to be diligent. Take a special effort. You know my term? Grit your teeth. Grit your teeth. It's time to go to church. It's time to stand up for Jesus. And don't worry about what John Doe's going to say because he can't do a thing about your spiritual condition. Grit your teeth. The word of God say, Lord, give me understanding so that I don't, I'm not mistaken. I want to I know what I'm talking about. And when I say it, thus saith the Lord. What saith the scripture? And go for it. What a blessing. I'm going to read, I'm going to read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of the Lord and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Verse 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he's proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, wherewith cometh envy, strife, railing, envy, surmisings, uh, just ideas. And, and th I don't even like to talk to somebody that's in the world in a situation like this. You know, I, 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 I want the Lord to draw me even farther away, farther away. I don't want to hear this stuff. I don't want it in there, George. I don't, want to, I don't even want to, to think about it. Verse 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. Have you ever seen anybody that had both pockets full of money and they said, what a nice person I am, you know? Adolf, I got two dollars in the offering plate, and I just, I did this, and I did that, and that stinks. That makes me want to vomit. Doesn't it? Just, it makes me so mad. Somebody to act like that. Show me. Come to church. Be willing to say, I can do that, and if I can, I'll learn. 
And if I can't, I'll pray for you because I know you can. You see what I'm saying? Be supportive of one another. We can't do, every, everybody can't do everything. Now Adolf, he can, he can bend a nail. I call it a nail bender. He, he, isn't it nice to see some of the nice things that, that uh, the people can do with, with wood and just, just an artist with things? Thank God for them. I have to be the guy that holds the nail. You know, I can't hardly build a dog box even when I was young. But that's okay. That's okay. I can hold the light. That's what I, that's what I used to tell them. I can hold the light. I'll hold the light for you. I maybe not, can't do it, but I'll hold you the light. I'll hand you a nail. I'll hand you a board. You know, I'll sweep the floor. There's something there for all of us. That's why when I stand before the, the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ, I'll have no excuse. And if you can read one, uh, one verse of scripture, he'll bless you with it. He'll bless you with it. I thank God for that. That's why we'll have no excuse. That's why it's so nice to come to New Testament Baptist Church when I see people working. Isn't it nice to work for the Lord? We're talking about eternity. And plus we get a paycheck while we're here. We're blessed. We're blessed while we're here. But just think, when we enter into his presence, enter thou into my rest, thou good and faithful servant, when he calls us home. That's what we're preparing for. See, that, there's, no, there's no room in my life for guilt. There isn't. I don't want any. I don't want any. If I have it, shame on me. Shame on me. I can't do much. But it doesn't make any difference. Dave, if I hold the light, I'm going to try not to hold it in your eyes. I'm going to hold it on the job. My wife, well, I always laugh at my father-in-law when we're talking about the girls. They had, they had four girls. And if you ever had a girl hold a light for you, she's going to hold it right in your eyes. You're working here. You know, but it's just as though, I said, Linda, where am I working? You know, trying it down here so I can see. Same thing. Same. It's the same thing. Isn't God good? And he does. God has a good sense of humor. He does. Sometimes I don't. I get grouchy and I apologize. You know? I'm working over here. Show me over here. No, not, not really. But isn't that how we do? Isn't that how we do sometimes? You know? Linda and I used to work for an elderly lady and she says how nice we work together. And we just looked at each other. You know, she just took up. You know? We, we, she was an older lady. She couldn't do anything. Hardly. And she said, oh, you and, you and Linda work together so good. And I'd tell Linda to go up and she'd go down. And I'd want to go left and she'd go right. And you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, oh, no. So enough of that. Enough of that. But it's how we get along with each other. We all can't do everything. But we can help each other. We can support each other. We can encourage each other. First Timothy chapter six, verse five. But godliness, pastor shared from this portion of his, in his message last week, here and in Job. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Remember when he shared about if you have a penny left over after you've, you've uh, paid the light bill and, and you've, you've, your clothing and your food, if you have a penny left over, how the Lord has supplied your need? There's contentment in that. There's contentment in that. As a Christian, verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Verse 8, And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Thank God for a scripture like that. Thank God for a scripture like that. Verse 9, But they, will be, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now, Brother Dave Wilkes and I both shared a scripture within the last month or two about, uh, we, were, we were talking, I think, about hell, and, and Brother uh, Delaney had uh, shared in Sunday school class about hell and, and what was taking place, and then I had shared something uh, from Proverbs about hell opening, you know, in, 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 in Isaiah, and Brother Dave shared that same scripture about destruction and hell, perdition. The end of chapter 9 right there, beloved, it says, Into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Verse 10, and we'll close. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, o man of God... Flee these things, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, 
whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Thank God for his word. We have to close. Father, we thank you for this time you've given us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence here. We just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would help each one of us to be a better man or a woman for you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be right in the center of your perfect will. Help us to know what you would have us to do, Lord, to please you. Help us to be a God pleaser, not a man pleaser. I just ask that you would once again anoint each heart afresh. Be with those that take part in the worship service this morning, in the music, in the even, Lord, right down to the announcements. Lord, as, as uh, we're, we're challenged of what's going to take place in the next week, next month, may we hear, may we understand, may we be part of your family right here at New Testament Baptist Church that willing to say, I, I, I'll do that. I can, I can do that. If I can't, I'll learn. If I can't, I'll pray for those that are doing it. Lord, help us to be faithful to you. Help us, Lord, in, the, in our worship. May you just receive everything that's said and done as part of our worship unto you. May you be pleased with each man, woman, and child here. And Lord, I pray for each family that's represented here. I guess I, I, I think of the, the brokenhearted, Lord, the, the needs that only you can provide. We thank you ahead of time for that in Christ's name. Amen.